Well, welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of Bethel, or also known as Bethel. I am so excited to be here. I've been waiting a long time to get here. There is so much that happened here, and I'm excited to share it with you. So at this biblical site, we'll be looking at the location of this place and why that's so important. We'll talk about the historical background of this location. We'll be looking at some of the amazing places of interest at this site. We'll see the key events in the Bible that took place here. And we'll end with a faith lesson in order to learn the major lessons God desires from us from this important biblical site. So I think you'll find this video very enlightening and transforming to your life. So a little bit about the location of this special site here. Bethel is in the hill country of Samaria. It's about 10 miles or 17 kilometers north of Jerusalem. So it's not far from Jerusalem. And Bethel stood at several main crossroads in Israel. It was on the main north-south road that passed through the central hill country from Hebron in the south to Shechem in the north. And it was on the main east route leading from Jericho to the Mediterranean Sea. So a key place, it was on the main travel route. In fact, we left Jerusalem this morning. We went up to Shechem and that was on this same road. Okay, it was a well-traveled road. Jesus would have walked on it. It's natural that Jacob would have traveled on it. Then he came by here. So it's one of the highest places in Israel, sitting at an elevation of 2,900 feet or 886 kilometers, so it was a high place. Therefore, it was a high place of worship, not only to Yahweh, to the true and living God of Israel, but to false gods. And once again, all throughout Israel, there would be these high places, and sometimes they would be to the Lord, but a lot of times they would be to the false gods as well. But it was always seemed to be on these high places. Now today, this ancient Bethel is located just close to the new city of Bethel. And it is an antiquities site that has been set aside by Israel, preserved to be remembered. Now a little about the historical background of Bethel. It's mentioned 60 times in the Bible, representing over 30 distinct stories and prophecies, all of them in the Old Testament. Only is Jerusalem mentioned more than Bethel. Did you hear that? Only Jerusalem is mentioned more than Bethel in the Bible. So that was a key place. And what does Bethel mean? It means house of God, house of God. Now I should mention there are three sites in this Bethel area that are of extreme importance. The first one is this high place up here. This appears to be where the tabernacle resided, where the ark was, where an altar was, and some significant other things. And then there's the actual town of Luz, the old biblical name of Bethel. And it's down below this just a little bit. We'll be showing you that. Then there's another place just down below that where it appears that Abraham pitched his tent, built an altar. And then later, Jacob pitched his tent and built an altar. There are some significant ruins down there. There is an old Byzantine church there. It fits the biblical description. So there's actually three significant places to this site. So just imagine the reality in these places here. Here is where the tabernacle was, where the altar was, then down below where Jacob pitched his tent, and then earlier Abraham pitched his tent. And then of course Luz and Bethel, the, the Old Testament names. So just amazing to be here and just to think about all that happened here, the significance of Bethel mentioned many times in the Bible. Well, here we are in the ancient town of Luz or Bethel. It was called Luz, that was his biblical name, and then Bethel as well. So we have the high place that's up above. Then we have the actual town where the people lived. Then we have down below where Abraham and Jacob pitched their tents. Now, unfortunately, there's not a lot left of the ruins here in Luz or Bethel. They were excavated many years ago, but then they've just gotten filled in over time. And because we're more in a Palestinian or Arab community, they haven't really been preserved that well. But you can still see the evidence of ancient Luz or Bethel 
amazing, amazing just to think about the reality that we're going back in time about 4,000 years. And that is when Abraham came through. That's when Luz, that was its original name. That's when it existed at that time. And of course, Jacob later. So unbelievable just to be here. There were extensive archeological digs, as I mentioned, done. So there's no doubt that this is the ancient Bethel or Luz that the Bible talks about. Unbelievable just to be here. Well, here we are at this absolutely unbelievable site here. We are at the spot where Abraham pitched his tent just east of Bethel. And then later, Jacob would pitch his tent just east of Bethel. And they would build altars to the Lord and call upon the name of the Lord. So it says in Genesis 12, 8, from there, talking about Abraham, he moved to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. So we are just east of Bethel and just west of Ai. So this is the spot. Both places have been identified. So this is the spot and there was built here a Byzantine church to mark this spot in the third century AD. And then Jerome who lived at that time said this. He said, there is also a church built where Jacob slept as he passed to Mesopotamia. Now this Byzantine church that was erected in the third century, the apse, that's the round circular part, it faced east, and that's normally how the Byzantine churches faced. So it's really amazing to see all this. This is so ancient. We're talking 1700 years old, but then it marks what happened 4,000 years ago. So just unbelievable that this is the spot that says that Abraham pitched. Of course, he pitched just outside of Luz or Bethel, and then just in between Ai and Bethel. So of all the places, this would be the spot. And in archeology, span one of the things that we always look for is one thing built upon top of another. So when we see this tradition going way back, then we know that this has been venerated for many, many years. So how special to be here and see this place. Unbelievable. And just to think about this being the place where Abraham would have pitched his tent and built an altar, and then of course, Jacob as well. So, wow, just really, really special. So there's a lot of amazing things here at this site. There's this large flat rock where it's believed that Jacob received the vision of this ladder ascending up into heaven and God spoke with him. So that's here. Well, this is the believed place where the rock is that Jacob laid his head upon. There is the tabernacle that is located here that was here for some time. It's the exact dimensions of the tabernacle. Now this place here is of extreme importance, this flat area right here. This is the believed place then where the tabernacle resided for some time. It fits the exact dimensions that are required and it's a flat area here. So this could be exactly where the tabernacle resided, unbelievable. There in the background is an altar and that is the believed place that Jeroboam set up. He set up one altar in Bethel and he set up one altar in Dan. After the nation of Israel divided into two and the 10 northern tribes went with Jeroboam, Jeroboam was afraid that the Israelites would go to Jerusalem and defect and align themselves with Rehoboam, the king of the two southern tribes. So he built an altar here and one in Dan. It was a golden calf. It was an altar to a golden calf. So in the same way you would sacrifice to the temple, 
then you would have sacrifices to these golden calves. And that would become the downfall, unfortunately, of the northern tribes. There's also a Muslim and a Crusader chapel that is here. Now these particular buildings here, there's two side by side. The one over here is from the Islamic period, early Islamic period, around 7, 800 AD. And then the other is a Crusader monument marking this spot out from the Crusader period around 1099, 1100 AD, right in there. So these two buildings side by side are marking this area up here, this high place, as a significant place. So they're marking this place out as a holy place. Well now let's go ahead and go into these two shrines here. The one on the left again is the Muslim shrine and the one on the right is the Crusader shrine or we can call them monuments. And we can see here that these sites go way back in time. We can see a little bit of the information about them. Now in front of these two monuments was a sign that says in danger of collapsing. However, we want to go in here. We want to show this to you. So here we are entering the Crusader monument or shrine and you can see inside of it. And then from this monument, the Crusader side, we will enter into the Muslim shrine or monument. So here we are now entering into the Muslim monument and shrine. Amazing to see these places and that they go back so far in time. Now right beside these two monuments is an ancient oak tree. And this oak tree boasts of being around a thousand years old. And now with these ancient sites, they always left these oak trees. So this shows that this site has been venerated for thousands of years. And this oak tree is supported so that it doesn't fall down. It's just so old. So again, this has been venerated for many, many years. There are caves here, walls and towers that are here. So there is a lot of things that have taken place here and there's a lot of things that are here. So we're excited to share those with you. So a rich place in the Bible, Bethel. Now on the side of this hill here are some amazing caves that we're gonna show you. So as you walk down the side of this, you can see here there are some Jewish burial caves and once again this gives more evidence that this place here, this site, is a holy place. They buried people, Jews, at these holy places and you can see here how these burial caves are just carved in to the limestone rock on the side of this high place up here. So quite amazing here to see these, and these date way, way back in time. You can see there's even more inside this one monumental cave here, so really special to see this. Amazing, just a lot of them here. Really surprising how many are here, and this wasn't all of them. There was even more than this. And then you can see here some of the walls up close. There were some towers here. These are all just buildings and walls of things that took place here on this high place. Once again, giving evidence that this is a holy place, a place set aside to remember things. Now here was something really special, this ancient olive press inside this cave. We're gonna go inside here and see this huge cave. And this is where they had an olive press. So they had olive trees here. And so then they would press the olive oil inside here. So it's once again, it's really large. You can see some of the relics and things. You can see in the background there are some books. Jews go here to this day and they will just have times of reflection, 
kind of acts as a little mini synagogue in some way. So they once again just take time to reflect inside. You can see the press right here of this olive press. And then now we're looking at just some of the walls. We're back up on top up here. So you can see some of the walls that were around this high place up here. Now we'll look at some of the things that happened here from the Bible. It was near Bethel that Abraham built one of his first altars mentioned in the Bible. And there he invoked the name of the Lord. It says in Genesis 12:8. From there he moved to the hill country east of Bethel. So where did Abraham first build his, his altar? By Shechem, Mount Ebal. Okay. Then he's going to move southward and he's going to arrive here and he's also going to build an altar here. It says from there he moved to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. So it wasn't right here that Abraham built the altar, but just down the hill aways, in between here and Ai, and they're just really close to each other. Now after Abraham fled to Egypt to escape a famine in the land, he returned to the same place near Bethel and once again invoked the name of the Lord. So Abraham went down to Egypt, there was a famine, then on the way back he comes back up to this area and then he again builds an altar and, and invokes the name of the Lord. It says in Genesis 13 too, Now Abram, who would be later Abraham, was very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold, and he journeyed on from the Negev, that's the southern part of Israel, as far as Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai, to the place where he had made an altar at first. And there Abram called upon the name of the Lord. So just right here close by, Abraham builds an altar, goes to Egypt, comes back, builds another altar or the same one there and invokes the name of the Lord. So just right here close by, to Bethel. Now when Jacob was fleeing from his brother Esau, he stopped for the night at Bethel where he had a dream. And that's what we're going to read about right now. In Genesis 28 10 it says, Jacob left Beersheba, and we were there, right? And went to Haran, that's northeast of modern day Syria. And he came to a certain place and stayed there that night because the sun had set. And the sun is getting close to setting here, so about the same time. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and laid down in that place to sleep. Now that place, this flat place is believed to be here, but he got this stone and he laid down. He put his head on top of it and then he went to sleep. And he dreamed. And behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your offspring. So it's just right here that around almost 4,000 years ago, Jacob would be coming, left Beersheba, going back to Haran, where Abraham was from, and he's going back fleeing from Esau because he had stole the birthright. And he would go there and spend a lot of years. He would work seven years for Rachel, but get Leah. Then he would work another seven years, and then he would marry Rachel. And then he would stay there even longer and then become wealthy. But as he's going up there, he comes right here and he has this dream. And there's this ladder going up into heaven and angels ascending and descending. And on top of it, there's the Lord who speaks. And he says, and behold, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth 
and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, and to the north and to the south. And in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now that's the same basic promise that God had given to Abraham. And so naturally, as you're up here, can you see a long ways? You can, you can see everywhere because you are on a high place overlooking a lot of the land. So it would be natural that God would say, I'm gonna give you north, south, east, and west. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. And what would the name of this become? Bethel, which means the house of God. And this is the gate to heaven. So early in the morning, Jacob took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called the name of that place Bethel, of which the name still resides to this day. But the name of the city was Luz or Luz at first. Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone, which I have set up for a pillar, shall be God's house. And all that you give me, I will give a full tenth to you. Now that would be, Abraham would give a tenth, right? Now, so Jacob is making this vow that I'm going to be going to Haran, but if I come back, you supply my needs, and I come back in peace, then you will be my God. And so Jacob did come back in peace, and he came back with two wives, children, and he came back with a ton of sheep and livestock, and he did come back in peace. So God did fulfill that. So then he comes back to this place, and let's see what happens. When Jacob was in Padan Aram, God told him then to return to the land of Israel. So he went up and worked. He earned his two wives. He worked for them and all this livestock. So then it says in Genesis 31, 13, I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar, where you made me a vow. Now arise, leave this land, and return to the land of your birth. So God tells him to leave Padam Haram, and Aram is kind of a shortened form of Haran. Okay, so it's basically the same place. And he says, arise and go back to the land of your birth. Now after Jacob returned to the Holy Land, he moved to Bethel to live. And God spoke to him and changed his name from Jacob to Israel. It says in Genesis 35, 1, Then God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and live there, and make an altar there to God, who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. Then in Genesis 35, 9 it says, Then God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Padam Aram, and he blessed him. God said to him, Your name is Jacob. You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. So it was right here that God changed Jacob from his name Jacob to Israel. And from that we would get the nation of Israel, right? Thus he called him Israel. God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall come from you and kings shall come from you. The land which I gave to Abraham and Isaac, I will give to you, and I will give the land to your descendants after you. Then God went up from him in the place where he had spoken with him. So God had this supernatural meeting then again with Jacob. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he had spoken with him, a pillar of stone, and he poured out a drink offering on it. He also poured oil on it. So Jacob named the place where God had spoken with him Bethel. So you see this place in the life of Jacob and how God 
reinstitutes or reaffirms the Abrahamic covenant. I'm going to give you this land and you're going to become a great nation. So now as we move along through the history of the Old Testament, we find that Bethel was a place where the tabernacle resided for some time. It says in Judges 20, 26, Then all the people of Israel, the whole army, went up and came to Bethel and wept. They sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until evening and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And the people of Israel inquired of the Lord, for it says the Ark of the Covenant of God was there in those days. Now after the kingdom of Israel was divided, then unfortunately Jeroboam would set up one of his golden calves to be worshipped right here in Bethel. So the believed place of the tabernacle then is just right over there behind that blue sign. Then the believed place of the altar that Jeroboam set up the golden calf on was that hill right over there that you can see, that mound. Now God warned Jeroboam about setting up this altar and told him not to do it. It says in 1 Kings 13, 1 that God warned him not to set up this altar, but Jeroboam did not listen and did it anyway. And so the continual disobedience of Jeroboam and the succeeding kings would seal the fate of Israel, the northern tribes. And so as a result, in the New Testament, you have no mention of Bethel. Once again, it's just going to fall into ruins after the golden calf and then after the nation of Israel, the 10 northern tribes are deported then it's just going to fall into ruins. Now let's go north to the Golden Calf Altar at Tel Dan. What I want to show you up close here is the altar. So we have the altar right here and you can see the size that it would have been. You can see the stones here. So this was the altar. Here is where they sacrificed the animals. Up here is where the platform for the Golden Calf was at. So the sacrifices were made here to this golden calf. So as we mentioned, in the same way in Jerusalem, you had an altar in front of the temple to the true and living God. Here you had an altar to this false God, this golden calf. So what I want to show you here now is we had the altar down below, and then right up here was the platform. And then the golden calf sat up here on the, the platform, a large golden calf, huge. And then once again, the altar down there where they sacrificed to this golden calf right here. So as I'm here and I'm just thinking about this and I'm realizing, I mean, you are seeing right here, you're seeing where a golden calf used to be. And you're seeing where many people, we're in the tribe of Dan obviously, so we're seeing where many people came to worship this false god and were led astray. When we realize what the Israelites were doing and how disobedient and sinful they were, we can understand a little bit better why God disciplined them and deported them. He warned them countlessly through many, many prophets, but they did not listen. However, it was Josiah who led a great revival in Israel who was responsible for tearing down this altar. He did it here and in Dan. It says in 2 Kings 23, 15, Moreover, the altar at Bethel, the high place erected by Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, that altar with the high place he pulled down and burned, reducing it to dust. He also burned the Asherah, which was a, a female uh, form of deity, supposed deity, that they worshipped as well. They had Baal, they had Asherah. Anyway, they, he tore that down and burned it as well. So that's why you don't see much here because uh, Josiah eliminated it. Now just before Elijah the great prophet ascended to heaven, he and Elisha were in Bethel. So Elijah and Elisha were right here. It says in 2 Kings 2, 1. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. 
So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets who were in Bethel came to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he said, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. So right here is where Elijah and Elisha were. Now after the ten northern tribes were deported, they were deported into Assyria, but some of the Israelites stayed here, and then the Assyrians repopulated the northern part of Israel with Assyrians. And then they were having all these problems. So the king of Assyria sent a prophet back to Bethel here to educate the people of the land about the true and living God of Israel. And we find that in 2 Kings 17. So after Assyria conquered and exiled the northern kingdom of Israel, the king of Assyria sent one of the captured Israelite priests back to Bethel to teach the people from other nations who lived in Israel how to worship the true and living God of Israel, Yahweh. So that was right here in Bethel. So once again, just picture all of these things happening here. Just so much history. And of the most significant is the fact that right here there's this ladder and there's this opening into heaven. And so Jacob is just in awe. And he says, this must be the door to heaven. This has got to be it. And so he names this name Bethel. And then of course you would see all of the things that would take place here, the tabernacle being here and other things that happen. So what are some faith lessons that we can take away from this important site? Bethel was a place of two different kinds of responses to God. It was a place where Abraham and Jacob had special encounters with God and worshiped him. And a place where the Ark of the Covenant dwelt, which represented the presence and glory of God. So it represents a place where God dwelt in a special way with Abraham, Jacob, and then the Ark of the Covenant being here. Unfortunately, it also represents a place of disobedience to God and the worship of false gods and idols. So you have the worship of the true and living God here and this doorway to heaven, the gate, the gate to heaven, but also here, Jeroboam erects this golden calf altar, so now you would have worship to false gods, and even to Asherah, and then even to Baal. So you have two different responses, two different kinds of worship that take place here. The worship of the true and living God, and then the worship of false gods. So we can learn a great deal from this site at Bethel. Are we going to be like those who worship the true and living God? like Abraham, like Jacob, like the Israelites when the Ark of the Covenant was here? Or will we be like those who worshiped idols and false deities? And what is an idol? What is a modern day idol? Anything that we place before God. It can be a family member. It can be our work. It can be our plans, our dreams. It can be money. Anything that would take the place of God can be a modern day idol. And so right here you're, you're looking at worship to the true and living God and you're, and you're looking at worship to idols. And in those days idols were different, although they had the same issues that we did as well. And that's why God tested Abraham to find out if Abraham loved his son Isaac more than he did God. So. What a wonderful time to be here. Once again, the sun is getting low, about ready to set. About the same time that Jacob would have come here, spent the night, and received this vision that would lead to the other things that uh, would happen here. So today, Bethel is a very popular name. Many churches are named after Bethel. It's a significant place, why? Because of the vision, the dream that Jacob had, and the significance of what took place here. So I hope you found this talk and this video enlightening. And may we be like Abraham and Jacob and those who worship God in the true way and not like the worship of idols and false gods. So thank you and may God richly bless you.